In this episode of My Slowball Heroes, I will be talking with Annie and Gaspar from Sweden. Now you might know them from Balboa, Lindy Hop, or maybe even Slowball, because they have traveled the world to share the joy of this beautiful dance. Now today I will be talking about how they discovered Slowball and also about their specific style in dancing. I'm happy as a Annie and Gaspar, <laughs> it's so nice to have a talk with you today about Slowball. And I'm very curious, how did you discover this beautiful dance? Yeah, <laughs> I will start. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having us uh, for this interview. Um, and I think it's a really nice topic to talk about. Well, I think uh, it was me who st started first uh, or get to know Slowball first. Uh, it was in Harang Dance Camp where actually Mick and Kelly had a class on, a, on a, like a blues day. I think it was a Tuesday or when they had blues, blues, yeah, blues nights. Yeah, back then it was a Tuesday. Yeah, they had these blues nights and uh, Mick and Kelly thought, uh, like, you know, since it's going to be a slow dance night, they, they show us all slow ball. Um, yeah, I was there in, for Balboa week, so it was really nice to have this, like, slow ball thing, you know, and um, it was really interesting for me to, to, to learn this dance then. Do you remember what year? Um, it might be like, I don't know, was it 2007 or 2008? I'm not really sure. Um, I don't even know if I got the dance right, but uh, I know that <laughs> the first triple step was turning there and the second triple step was like diagonal down. I remember this much, so I practiced then later on with people who was in the class with me uh i tried it in the evening i uh, my first yeah. uh, experience of sloba was also in harang probably not the same year probably um <clears throat> maybe the year after 2008 or nine yeah mm. maybe 2008 um so i was dancing i was dancing with gasper it was one of the first times i was dancing with you and at some point gasper is asking me Annie, do you know what we're dancing? And I was like, I, I don't care. <laughs> because it was great. It was wonderful. Any dance I danced with Gashford was awesome. So I was like, yeah, I know. I have no idea. I don't really mind. <laughs> and then he said, slow ball. And I was like, I never heard of that. But it's great. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And uh, yeah. It was, a, it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> yeah. I improvised it really well. Oh, yeah, most yeah. likely. Oh. But what did you like most about it then? Because there was something that made you fall in love with the dance, no? Yeah, it's uh, like um, what I saw on the Mickey and Kelly when they show us. I was like, wow, I never saw this before. Um, so I was very interesting, you know, like I'm always interested in new dances, um, but this one has this like, what, what I saw on them, they have really nice flow and uh, no. the communication between them. So if I, I can achieve that, you know. I, what I like is also the the music, that it's, it's a different music and that right. sometimes for Balboa dancers or Linda Hoppers is kind of hard to adjust to, it's nice, it's nice to be able to dance also to those sweet and romantic songs. I think both of us are very sweet and romantic. <laughs> <laughs> we have that side sure. at least. So we really yeah. enjoy the, that music and to be able to dance with it and, and express those um, sides to, to the jazz and to the, to the dance. Mm. So that's, that, I think for me, it, a very big part is the romance. The romance, yes. Yeah, Do you the think, because 
I, I, I think I told you, Annie, uh, when, we, when we met in Turkey in, uh, in England, that when I, when I look at you two dancing, it feels like very intimate and like you're kind of peeking into a, a private moment that you're having there. <laughs> um, well, I guess it's true, yeah, in a way. Is it also how it feels when you two are dancing, like you're really connected and really into each other? And is that mm -hmm. something that would describe your style in slow ball as well? Yeah, I guess. What do you feel? Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> so, of course, well, sometimes when you're performing, uh, it is hard to always feel super connected because you know that people are watching you. And uh, I always disliked being in the center of attention, kind of being stared at when I'm dancing. For me, it's always very private uh, what I'm doing on the dance floor uh, because it's <clears throat> it's just purely what I feel like. So sometimes I think I also, I dive into that emotion kind of blocking out the fact that there is an audience there and that's the moment when we really connect. Um, so maybe sometimes it's, it's maybe uh, it projected as very private, either because I just, I feel relaxed and connected with Gashper and sometimes maybe more because I'm not comfortable with people watching and I, I close into myself a bit more. So I, it's possible it shows <clears throat> differently. Yeah, I think all these years of practicing like teacher demo uh, <laughs> on a different Balboa event, uh, you know, I mean, I was in, a, I coming more from, from the show part of the dancing and I'm used to audience and I, I like the audience. Um, but like when I started with Dani, it's, uh, I know that she has this thing that she don't <laughs> want to be in the center of, uh, attention. So to me, it's very important how I connect with her, that I'm really with her that moment and not with the audience. And I think when it comes to the slow dancing, then everything just shows up how much connection you can really have, like how good or well you are connected with your partner so you're not doing really showing off um, but more like dancing with each other yeah, and, and this is think, hard sometimes yeah I think it's it's kind of similar with our Balboa dances also even mm. if it's a different feeling it's still it's, um, also when we teach the connection is what we Put most. So when you're talking about connection, I think it's more than just the physical part of it, right? It's more, it's more than just shuffling in and, and feeling uh, the other person's body against your own body. It's, it's, it's also something else. So can you give maybe a tip to Bobo and Slowball dancers in how to establish this connection that it's deeper than just the physical? Well, I've, I think first of all, uh, we talk about trust a lot. Uh, you need to trust your partner and, and really, you know, relax into that this partner I'm dancing with is going to make everything as clear as possible and as safe as possible. And, you know, on every level, you need to kind of choose to trust each other. But you also need to find that trust in yourself that you are, you are there for your own uh, balance, your own safety and everything like that. So if you don't find that trust in yourself and your partner, it's going to be hard to connect. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I mean, in, in the deep level. So mentally, you need, to, you need to land in this realization that we are here right now together mm -hmm. because we choose to and we will take care of each other yeah. throughout this experience. Yeah. I think, for me, that's Beautiful. <laughs> right? yeah. Very good description. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I don't know if I can add can more. You, uh, can you top this, Gaspar? Yeah. I mean, it is like that, as Ami said. Um, sometimes when I practice, uh, like I'm a practice when I, uh, I'm, I found myself in a competition, if there is no real connection with my partner then, which is not Ani, someone else that I should not compete with, like Jack and Jill or something like that. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really tough to, it to yeah. show 
your personality like you know it's a hand in hand dance uh it's a teamwork yeah i remember if, if i can yeah, no. please get into your it's something that gashper said very early on when we started teaching together i think it was balboa but it it doesn't really matter to me so much which dance it is as long as it's a close connection dance but you said something about when when i feel my partner uh and i are adjusting our uh, breathing to the same kind of tempo when i can feel that our breathing are matching that's when i feel connected and relaxed mm. do you remember that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know if you still no but looking but, for that but i remember yeah. saying it and i was like yeah this makes sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're tuning into yeah, your own body and to the other person's body, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I, I don't know if I'm con consciously listening to, to my partner's breaths, but I, I, I probably do. Mm. Uh, well, as a follower. But, but this is like, uh, we consider us more like a social dancers than competition dancers or whatever. We are social dancers and of course you learn how to feel each other uh like energies i can tell is ani tired or anyone else is tired or is it full of energy or um you want to match that you want to as my job as a leader mostly i'm a leader it's to follow that energy to to bring my partner with me into the music and feel safe there and uh, trust me, <laughs> the, the getting gaining the trust, I think, is the uh, the very important thing that you can achieve. Do you or one of you has any um, experience in tango? Because one of my students uh, sent in a question for you guys. I was like, do they have any tango experience? Because your connection has some similarities to it. Interesting. Yeah, I was in tango. Uh, lessons i think i went two times uh for the like beginner class <laughs> it was a different teacher so i was really pretty much interested in how they are teaching and uh, there's the same steps or is there another, another variations but um yeah i learned tango and we were also invited to tango festival we did uh for... we did a little uh what do you call that? We went to a tango festival and showed off some Balboa. What Balboa? <laughs> oh. We wanted more students and we wanted students that wasn't necessarily all Limby Hoppers. Um, so we went there. It was international. Do you remember the teacher? Yeah. No, but they were like super famous from Argentina. From Argentina. And they were amazing and they did a show. And then it was like the best tango dancers in Sweden or Gothenburg mm. that did a show. And there comes we. <laughs> and uh, after Showing all this super deep emotional tango and amazing performances i was like oh what are we doing here we uh put on our song which was the uh goofy goofus goofy <laughs> Go goofus uh, if mm. you know the song you know it's a, it's a complete break from tango <laughs> it's a very uh silly uh, mm. kind of energy laughing uh, kind of sound to it and i think it fit us very well and, and especially gashper so we do our little dance and people are super shocked i think <laughs> they were not ready or uh prepared but they are you know whistling and applauding and laughing in the middle of the song and so it's a, it's a very nice energy and after that we got some uh, some people that actually wanted to sign up and also the teachers were like you should you should join our workshop this weekend mm -hmm. come tomorrow at two o'clock or whatever it was and we took some tango classes on advanced level <laughs> wow <laughs> and uh wow it was uh, difficult for some of us yeah i have uh like before that the i have a little bit of tango experience only because i was i've tried i tried most couple dances through my life Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't necessarily taken classes in every dance, but I was I was living in Miami, in Miami Beach for a month or something. So every Monday we used to go to this uh, tapas bar and dance tango, uh, just kind of 
social dance and a little bit would be a teacher there. And then every t Tuesday, salsa. <laughs> so that's all, yeah. But I really like the music and the, the feeling of that dance. Yeah, remember uh, what teacher in that festival told us? Like it's we, long ago. <laughs> yeah, we, so we finished that song showing what the boys. Um, it was really like funny. It was fun. But she said, well, she come to us, she said, oh, that was wonderful. And I need to tell you that you have such a really nice joy and energy there. Uh, and you have this smile. Mm -hmm. You're dancing with a smile. And this is what I'm missing. While well, I see people dance tango here, this is what I miss to see the smiles on their faces. They are so serious and they are enjoy. And this came from the words of like super great tango expert <laughs> who is dancing tango for I many years. Yeah. And it's kind of a, I feel it, I, I mean, I feel really good to hear that. And also that my senses about tango, the tango is really serious dance. It only show up out from the people who are dancing it. Do you think Slobo has it as well? Because Lindy Hop, for example, we know it, the the music is just, you know, energetic. It's 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 it just shouts out like pleasure, laughter, joy. But Slobo has a little bit less. I think for me, at least, for the, the music. So do you do you think like this joy is also a big part of Slobo, or it, does it go a little bit more towards the seriousness of tango? <laughs> I think for me, uh, there is definitely a joy in, in slow ball. It's a, it's a, it has a different um, texture to that kind of joy. It's, it's that um, kind of calm inwards joy where you can just land in <clears throat> a smile. Maybe you're not laughing right out loud too much. It happens when we dance, of course, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for sure. But more, it's 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 uh it's it's maybe after after the the joy and laughter, you kind of sink into that contemplating smile. For me, that's that's a joy in slow ball. We talked a lot about your style and the intimacy of it. And um, if you look at the old timers dancing, have you ever have you ever met one of the old timers? And how do you think your style relates to what they did, how, or how does it differ from what they did? I have sadly never met any of the old timers. So. No, me either. <clears throat> Probably our style is different because I, I, like, I feel like our style is very much comes from ourselves. And we, of course, we uh, we look at and look up to uh, other dancers, uh, especially Mickey and Kelly. They were our first teachers, mm -hmm. right? And then we deep, dig a little bit deeper and watch uh, Dina Raftery. And I think you you really like his style. Mm -hmm. the more upright, kind of old school. And I really I really like both styles. I, I love match, mixing, mixing and matching uh, constantly. So I think because we also have a little bit different preferences and we dance a lot together, it becomes both somewhere in between. Yeah, because we influence, even if I'm the follower, I will make him dance a different way sometimes when I feel that music brings me there. Changing energies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dean Raftery dancing with Cara Brit is really still my favorite uh, video to, to watch on YouTube. Mm. Um, and for, I mean, we can be fortunate that they have that we have Mickey and Kelly um, because I think they are the only Americans who sh who brought slow ball over the seas into the Europe and if they wouldn't show it in her rank I don't know elsewhere was but yeah they wouldn't would affect on us today yeah yeah exactly yeah we have lots lots yeah. to thank them for. and uh, yeah you know I think after our show um, in Harlem, Vilnius, Harlem, 2016, I think it was, uh, we made this slow ball um, 
uh, on a Moonlight Serenade, Glenn Miller. The, yeah. Yeah, we danced on it, and I just before I went to, we we went on a stage to show this dance. Mickey was there, and I told Mickey, "This dance is for you." And he was like, "What? What?" <laughs> what then, are you gonna do now? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we came off. He was a little bit. He had like wet eyes. He was. I, I saw he was like moved and. Um, but seriously, um, yeah, we give a lot of credit to Mickey and Kelly, and we want we want to show how thankful we are to them. So each, every class we try to really to give them also credits. This is how Mickey and Kelly dance like. So we give like many options. This is how we prefer to dance, a bit of old school dance, a bit like Dean Raftery. You can dance like Mickey and Kelly, we show that version. Uh, we have our version, Annie and Gasper as well, like a little bit mixed with um, folk dancing <laughs> as well well yes. you know it's a language but i think i think also it's important uh i think also miki usually talks about this how how it is important to develop the dance and not just get stuck in the little little tiny bit that we know about it because we don't have so much information from the old timers and it's it's we don't have so many old timers that we heard anything from about the dance uh, so it's it's important to kind of stay true to um, to what you know, but also to kind of develop your own stuff. So when we, I, at least I usually mention when we teach that, okay, we do it this way, they do it more this way, because we can of course not copy exactly what Mick and Kelly does or Dean Raftery, but you can see different styles and that you need to find your own way, your own mm. um not style necessary, but how do you like to do it most? And yeah, we... what works for your body. Exactly. exactly. And like, yeah, it's a lot of these rotations and everybody that are not that flexible. Yeah, that can be the body. hardest thing. Yeah. But I think uh, we put a lot of effort into to those rotations and the, the, the flowy upper body thing um, and mm. for people to explore actually their mobility some people are not used to do it and then it could be really good to to feel that flow uh, but if you uh, if you can't then you can't you yeah. need to find yeah. your comfort you need sure. to find your comfort zone and then uh, challenge it once in a while <laughs> yes <laughs> explore your body indeed yeah. dancing slow is not necessarily slow ball i hear you saying because you uh, a different style could be slow Lindy. What what then is slow ball? What makes slow ball slow ball? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's an excellent question. What makes it slow ball slow ball? Well, my spontaneous thought is uh, it's a connection. If you're if you're open, like in Lindy, or if you're more close, because the rhythm is is pretty similar, mm. right? You know, to well to me, slow ball is um, very close what Dean Rafter would dance. So like pretty much imitating his version of um, combination of the steps and syncopated steps, and what everything is off from that pattern, it's a uh, well slow, just slow dance. Um, but I think a little bit is the music choice will make it more slow bow. Uh, for me, the music, uh, the slow bow music is more the serenades and, and it's a certain rhythm and, and feeling to it. Mm, and melody, do yeah. you have a, a favorite slow bow song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, which one is my, your favorite? My favorite song? is, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I think that's you're, you're asking the DJ here. <laughs> Sorry, but if I if one, I could choose one, <laughs> yeah, I would be then um, uh, Benny Goodman, the man I love, mm. live from Carnegie Hall. I think that's my. That's really really good. Yeah, that's my. That could be my favorite too. Top. Mm. What's your favorite, Annie? Well, it it could be the man I love uh, for sure. 
same. Uh, it definitely has the right slow bow feeling to me. But I also like the uh, Snöfall. It's a Swedish name. It means snowfall. Uh, by Charles Redland and his swing band. Uh, it has also this right feeling for me. Mm. But I, I am, I have a very hard time saying what is my favorite. I, I think I have easier to say what is less favorite dances. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have the DJ here. I'm uh, very satisfied with his choices mostly. <laughs> mm. What a luxury. Uh, I am spoiled this way, very spoiled. I know that Mickey is, is working very hard to, to keep Slowbell alive. And you two are also doing your part by, you know, teaching it all over the world. Um, how do you, what does the future of Slowbell look like? What do you think? What will, will happen with this dance? Hmm. Hard to say, but I think, I feel like Slowbell is, is booming right now. It's everywhere kind of popping up like little, little smaller or bigger mushrooms. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I think it has definitely a, a big future. Uh, that's my feeling, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, when I think about it right now, it's uh, a lot of festivals, they want to have just not just like Balboa there, or but they want to include slow ball as either as a taster Mm. or regular like, class well, like so class. it's happening a lot and um, it is and nobody nobody actually gets surprised nowadays a couple of years ago when we would suggest slow ball they'll be like oh what, mm -hmm. what is that mm. oh, okay but now if if you talk about slow ball they will be like oh yeah right mm -hmm. yeah even if they haven't done it they've seen it so right they were like what is slow ball yeah, back there? Well, something you cannot really, it's too slow for the lindy hop and doesn't really fit on the blues. <laughs> well, there, something in between. <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, yeah. I think also, of course, you are doing a great job with uh, spreading, spreading the love and the, the knowledge about slow dance. Yeah. Slow Thank you. Thanks to you as well. Yes. Mm. Um, definitely. Yeah. All right. But thank you very much for your time today. And it was really great talking to you a little bit more about Slowball and mostly your story uh, about this dance. So thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you so pleasure. much. Thank you.